Hi guys, welcome back. How are you doing? If you're new to this channel, then I want to tell you that we have more than 100 videos of Golang on our channel. So if you're learning Golang right now, take a look around and do subscribe so that uh, you can learn. And we have almost a new video coming out every day. Uh, so uh, this video is the second video of uh, the series which is for crawling a sitemap. So you can crawl using this, the code that I'll show you in this uh, series, you will be able to crawl the sitemap of any uh, website on the internet. So uh, in the first video, I've shown you the approach that we'll be following. And right, right now in this video is when we'll start writing the actual code. So let me take my uh, terminal. I'll just uh, increase the font so that you can see everything. And what we'll do is here is we'll create a directory called um, sitemap or let's say YouTube sitemap crawler. All right. And we'll cd into it. And here we'll uh, initialize this program so we'll say go mod in it github.com slash akil slash uh, sitemap crawler so whenever you start a golang project you have to uh, initialize it saying go mod in it which creates a mod file for you go.mod file uh, and if you're from a javascript background this is like npm init so it creates a go.mod file which is like package.json which basically creates the list uh, you know uh, keeps the list of the dependencies that you'll be using in your project so let's do that so it says it has created a new go.mod file for us and as in when we'll keep installing new and new packages in our project it will create a go.sum file which is the equivalent of package.log.json file if you're from a javascript background which basically has the list of the dependencies of the dependencies that you're using in your project all right and uh, what we'll do now is we'll uh, open up our code editor so in this case i'm using visual code studio Oh, sorry not studio i think it's just video visual studio code sorry yeah so i'm using vs code and you could be using uh, anything else it doesn't matter so this video uh, we're going to just create the outline of our project which we'll just write the, write the outline of the functions and in the next video onwards we'll start uh, creating the actual functions this won't be a very long series maybe just five to six videos 10 minutes each and we'll uh, be able to complete the entire project in that so let's create our file main.go uh, if you haven't seen the first video of this series, then uh, I strongly suggest you go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. So the first series, uh, the first video of the series, you'll be able to understand what we're going to do with the diagram. And then in this video, we'll start writing the code. Uh, so if uh, again, if you're new to this channel, then uh, if this is your first series, then I would say that uh, you can, uh, you know, I'll recommend two other series to you. One is uh, the Bing Scraper. There's a series on Bing Scrapers. You can go and uh, go to playlist and check it out. And there's a series on Google Scraper. So uh, it's best if you check those out before you uh, watch this series, because we're going to build on the uh, concepts that we have learned in those series. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, use them here. Uh, so even if you've not understood the concepts there i'll still go through everything line by line here so it's not that you have to have to watch them but if you watch them uh, it, it'll just give you a more solid understanding of what's happening here but i'll still go through every single line i'll explain to you everything what's happening here all right so the first thing that you usually do in your uh, main.go file main.go file is the most important file in your golang project so main.go file the first thing that you do is that you write package main and then you say import and the import statement will basically have the list of all the packages that we'll be using. Some of them could be, uh, you know, uh, not third third uh, party packages and some could be third party packages. All right. So we'll import them here uh, based on whatever we need in the project. Then uh, we'll have our func main, which is like your entry point into the project. So this is your most important function. Right. And from func main, I'll uh, be calling a function called scrape sitemap so this is going to be our most important function okay and uh, the most important function because this is uh, going to do the majority of the work for us so the the data that we want after scraping the sitemap we want uh, also the seo data so if you watch the first video you understand that not only are we going to scroll through the sitemap but we are also going to assess seo data from the site so we'll create a struct so structs are basically your own uh, data types in golang where you can store data in a particular format so we'll create we're going to create our own struct called seo data so uh, i'll just write the right uh, seo data for now and it's going to be a struct all right and then we'll have uh, to also parse a lot of information from the pages that we scrape or crawl and then we'll uh, 
that means we need a parser which will be of type interface and we'll get into that later on so if you have not uh, read about interfaces uh, not a problem uh, you know we won't uh, get it too deep into it but you can go and check other videos on interfaces so they, they, it's an easy concept it's not very difficult and then uh, when we have a scrape site map uh, function so let's actually create that functions funk scrape site map function okay so it's going to obviously uh, take a couple of parameters it's going to return something so we'll, we'll talk about that and the scrape site map function is going to call a function called extract uh, extract site map urls this is the function it's going to call all right and uh, it's also going to call another function called scrape urls and this extract site map uh, url function is going to call a function called so first let's write down uh, the outline of this function it will be extract site map urls function and it's going to call a function called make request so the make request function is pretty clear uh, it's basically going to make a request like a get request to the link so that we get the data and then we'll take that data we'll use uh, an external package called uh, uh, it's called um, it's by i think it's called go script no it's called go query yeah sorry it's, it's called go query <laughs> so we'll use the package to uh, get whatever response we get from the request and then we'll convert it into an object that's readable by golang okay so um, so that's what our uh, make request function does and then we'll have uh, a function called scrape page function so we'll have but before that i think i'll just write down these functions so we'll have make request function we'll take some parameters and we'll return something and then we'll have our uh, scrape urls function so we'll have func scrape urls and then we'll have our um, scrape page function so we'll say func scrape page right and then we'll um, now to scrape scrape a page before scraping a page we'll have to crawl it so we'll have a crawl page function as well so we'll say func crawl page so right now i'm just uh, you know over the top of mind i'm just writing the, the the approach based on the diagram that i've shown you in the first video i'm just writing down the approach and creating like a skeletal map of the functions that i want to create but what type of data types they'll accept what they will return and the actual definition of the functions that we'll have to think through together and we'll uh, create everything together so so we'll have uh, so this is by the way a really good practice so first you draw the diagram like i did in the first uh, video that helps you plan the entire project and then once you write down these functions in skeletal format that helps you basically understand the flow of how you're going to proceed all right so um, then i'll have a function for get seo data so i'll have func get seo data function So these are all the functions I'll have. I'll have a main function, I'll have a scrape sitemap function, which will basically craw call the extract sitemap URLs. So it will go to a sitemap, it'll you know extract all the sitemap URLs, it'll scrape those URLs, uh, and you know it'll make uh, requests, it'll scrape uh, it'll scrape the pages. To scrape the pages, you have to crawl the pages and then you'll parse and get the SEO data, right? So all of these things it'll do. So that's how we'll build a sitemap crawler, and which also gives us SEO information. And we'll have a struct for our SEO data. That's the most important thing. And then we'll have a parse interface, and then to make requests, we'll be using user agents. And then we'll have a function for selecting a random user agent. Now, the reason why I said that you uh, it's it's uh, that I recommend watching the Bing Scraper and the Google Scraper series is because of user agents. So I've explained what user agents are and how they work. And if you do, if if you have not watched those video series, then uh, I'll explain to you here again. So user uh, a user agent is basically like a browser uh, telling the website 
uh, any website that hey it's not uh, like a bot uh, you know uh, scraping your website it's like a human being so it's like a human being signature kind of a thing like a like an actual uh, you know how a human being would uh, use a browser to uh, visit a website that's how we'll make the request so that's why we need a random user agent and we'll need that in our make request page so we'll need this random user agent uh, you know uh, there and we'll have a list of user agents and then we'll use our random user agent function to select uh, uh, a user agent from these from this list randomly and then use that to make a request so every single request every time we make a request we'll use a separate uh, uh, user agent so that uh, we don't end up overloading the website or they don't end up blacklisting us all right so this is the outline of the function of the, of the entire project and then we're going to build upon this so I'm going to keep this video short and I'm going to try and keep all of the video short and going to keep, uh, you know, keep uh, less information in every single video so that uh, you watch them one by one and over a period of a couple of days in the sense, uh, you know, watch one video per day so that if you need to go long, then you'll be able to understand everything really well. And that's how I recommend uh, going forward with these type of projects, by the way. That's why I, I divide them into different videos so that you watch one on each day and then you learn more because uh, you get more time to research, understand, write code and try to understand the syntax and all of that. So thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe to the channel so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out. And um, do stay subscribed because we have a lot more, a ton of stuff uh, around Golang coming up. So thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.